Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine. If you've been having trouble starting your car lately, or if low gasoline mileage has you baffled, then make it a point to have your spark plugs checked soon. Dirty, worn spark plugs can rob your engine of power and pickup and may even waste one out of every ten gallons of gasoline you buy. Let the car savers at standard stations or independent Chevron gas stations check your plugs. They'll clean them and reset the gap, or if necessary, they'll be glad to install new spark plugs. Stop in tomorrow for an efficient car saver spark plug checkup where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now, tonight's story, The Symbol Three, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, mark well the Symbol Three. It's the key to destiny. Since I heard those words whispered to me on the telephone only two weeks ago, I've been living in a world of fear, horror, for these words have already twice brought into my home violence and sorrow. And now I know they're also going to bring death. What's worse, I can't get my husband's help. And I can't go to the police. So please, please, Mr. Valentine, come to see me as quickly as you can. But be sure you speak to me alone and introduce yourself merely as a friend. Sincerely, Ruth Laswell. <laughs> Unavoidable accidents. That horrible voice on the phone predicted them each time. And I know that the accident that's Mrs. coming... Mrs. Laswell, please, if I'm to try and help you, you must start from the beginning. I'm sorry. You said that the voice first called you about two weeks ago. Yes. Yes, Miss Brooks. Mark Weld Assemble Three. It's the key to destiny. That wasn't all he said, was it? No. He told me he was speaking to me. Because my husband would never believe what he had to say. And even though there was nothing I could do to stop the accident, I should know about them as Martin's loving wife. Those were the words he used. Uh-huh. You didn't recognize the voice at all, eh, Mrs. Laswell? No, it was hoarse and low. There was no hatred in it, no emotion at all. I know it sounds crazy, but it sounded... Well, the way people usually imagine the voice of doom to sound... Uh-huh. Did he say what sort of accident would take place, Mrs. Lazo? No. Just said there would be three accidents to teach my husband humility. Humility? <laughs> you don't know my husband, do you, Mr. Valentine? No, except my reputation. Yes, we see his signs all over. Another construction job by Martin Lazo. He's big and self-assured. The driving force of a bulldozer. He forbade me even to speak about these accidents, let alone ask anyone for help. I see. Just what was the first of these accidents like, Mrs. Laswell? My husband's pride and joy was his great dame. Three, day, three days after the voice telephoned, the dog died. Died? How? In a freak accident. Somehow he got tangled in his own leash and choked to death. But that doesn't sound possible. I know, but it happened. The dog was powerful and big. There were no signs of a struggle. Apparently no one, certainly no stranger, came near him. But there it was. A few hours later, the voice called again. It said the first accident took place. And I'd hear from him again soon. And I gather he didn't disappoint you, Mrs. Laswell. No. No, he didn't disappoint me. He called last week on a Wednesday... 
And he again said, Mark well the symbol three. It's the key to destiny. And he hung up. What happened this time? That Saturday, our chauffeur, Johnny Gibbons, had an accident. He ran the car into a wall. He said he couldn't possibly explain why there was nothing at all wrong with the car, no possible reason for the accident. He says it just happened. Luckily, he wasn't hurt badly, but he might have been killed. And the voice called you again? Just as before, and took credit for the accident. And he said he'd call once more. When did he call this time? The day before yesterday. I'm afraid Mr. Valentine's scared to death. For Martin and for me. I know the third accident will happen to someone closer to Martin. And not knowing how and when it can happen, just knowing it will happen. Ruth, Ruth, I was looking for you and I... Oh, I... I didn't know there was anyone with you, Mrs. Lattery. Uh, it's all right, Mr. Dunn. Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine, this is my husband's junior partner. And our good friend, Edwin Dunn. How do you do? Mr. Valentine, I know why you're here. And I still don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I thought getting me in the middle of this thing was supposed to be strictly between us, Mrs. Laswell. Uh, I told you Mr. Dunn is a good friend. I I just didn't want Mr. Laswell to know. Oh, I see. Mr. Laswell is a fine man, but he has a violent temper, and he's almost obsessed with the idea that he doesn't need anyone's help, that he's too big for anyone to help him. And he isn't. No one is. Yeah, you're right on that score. Besides, uh, I don't know exactly what you can do, Mr. Valentine. You can't be bodyguard for all of us. And certainly you won't be able to protect Mr. Laswell if he doesn't want you to. But you can stay here as my friend and do something, try to find something, so we don't just sit and wait. You will help me, Mr. Valentine, won't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'll stay here. But, George, what is there to go on? Where can you start? Uh, the chauffeur, Mrs. Laswell. Is he well enough to be back on the job? Oh, yes. And Mr. Laswell isn't using him this afternoon. Johnny is in his apartment over the garage. Good. Good. That's about the only point we can begin from, isn't it, Brooksy? And you don't have any explanation at all for your accident, eh, Johnny? John. John Wesley Gibbons. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the road, was it slippery? No, Miss Brooks, not at all. Or perhaps you took the curve too sharply, Mr. Gibbons. There was no curve to take. It's like I said, there was no reason for me to lose control of the wheel. I've been driving for years with a fine record. It was as though I was made to have this accident by some power bigger than me. Now, John, I mean, Mr. Gibbons, you don't really believe that something, uh, well, supernatural made you have that accident, do you? There are many things we don't understand, Mr. Valentine. I'm a bachelor... And I've got time to do a lot of reading. We don't even begin to guess at some of the forces that exist all around us. Ah, uh, yeah. For instance, I was worried about what Mr. Laswell would say about the accident. He's a big man and a violent one. And he has no patience with little people like me. What did Mr. Laswell say? Well, that's just it. Nothing. Mrs. Laswell said she'd speak to him first. And she did. And nothing at all was said about the car. Yes, sir, there are forces all around us that make all sorts of strange things happen. I, uh, I think there was a simpler explanation for your boss's behavior, Mr. Givens. Well, if you ever want to sit down to have a chat with me, young man, I'll be glad to do it and lend you some of my books. You too, young lady. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Books make you the equal of any man. Uh-huh. You don't have any idea when Mr. Laswell will be home, do you, Mr. Givens? Oh, yes, yes. I'm going to pick him up at the office in about a half hour. Thanks. We'll wait for him. Well, you must be rather recent friends of Mrs. Laswell's, uh... Uh, Mr. Valentine, is it? Uh-huh, that's right, Mr. Laswell. And if Ruth had a friend as pretty as you, Miss Brooks, I'm sure she'd have mentioned it to me before. Well, uh, that is thank you. Well, she always talked enough about other things. Well, you see, Mr. Laswell, Yeah, look, we... Valentine, let's not be childish about this. Ruth hired you as a sort of bodyguard to the Laswell household. When Johnny mentioned your name to me, I looked you up. Ah, it seems this whole thing has been the worst-kept secret in the world. I need no help. I need no protection. 
I need no nursemaid. But surely with those two accidents and the threat of a third... <laughs> but I, I didn't say I wouldn't welcome some company just to relieve the tension. <laughs> that was certainly an elaborate build-up to a sudden letdown. Valentine, I'm a realist. I see what's going on in my house. Hmm? I don't believe in a voice of doom. On the other hand, I don't close my eyes to what has happened. Well, then. Well. So, by all means, welcome until the deadline has come and passed. Have a drink? Let's get ready for dinner. Well, yes, of course. No need to worry my loving wife. Whatever we can do to put our mind at rest... We... Martin! Martin! Yes, Martin. yes, Ruth. Yes, what is it? What is it, Mrs. Leslie? What happened? Ruth, Ruth, cut it out. Come on, what's the matter? The accident. The third accident. It just happened. Mark well the symbol three. What happened? What are you trying to say? The watchman on your new construction job, Martin. He fell to his death with no one around him. The poor man's over there, just where he fell, Mr. Laswell. Thanks, Sergeant. Wagon will be coming for him in a minute. Brooksy, you'd better go back to the car and wait there with Johnny. Yes. Yes, I think so, George. I'll see you later. Johnny, you bumbling fool. Bring up the car. Come on, Valentine. Yeah. His name is Williams. He's been with us for many years. A nice old man. Uh, oh, careful. Yeah. Good and steep down here, all right. Big drop. Yeah. We're just getting ready to clear all this up. The rocks, so, so we can sink a foundation. Uh-huh. He must have been walking up there, along the edge. Somehow lost his footing. And all these rocks on the bottom. Ah, humility. That's a stupid word and a stupid idea. Three accidents to teach you humility. Coincidence. And someone takes advantage of them to call up later and talk nonsense. If I could get my okay, hands Okay, okay. Here he is. In front of his coat covered with this powdered gray stuff. Shows he slid on his chest the first part of the way down. Valentine, this had to be an accident. All of them had to be. I'm not arguing with you, Laswell. There's a big board fence around this whole place and a gate with a lock. Williams wouldn't let a stranger in. And there's no reason to kill Williams. There isn't a thing of value here, not a thing. Uh-huh. Only a crazy man would kill another human being for no reason at all. Another accident. The third. Well, at least it's all over voice said there would be only three. There's one thing bothers me about this third accident. Huh? It broke the rhythm. And if there's one thing this whole crazy case had, it was rhythm. What are you talking about, Valentine? The symbol three. Three accidents. Each occurs on the third day after the warning. When was Mrs. Laswell warned about this one? The day before yesterday. Yeah. But Williams here died on the second day. Why? Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. What do you really look for in the motor oil you buy for your car? Long engine life? If you do, new RPM motor oil is the answer. Switch over now to new RPM, the oil that doubles engine life, the time between major overhauls due to lubrication. Developed through atomic energy, new RPM is years ahead in offering better protection for your car. New RPM cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts. Even a cab company operating in the tough daily grind all cabs go through found new RPM motor oil reduced engine wear 71%. And compared with conventional oils, new RPM gives double protection against gum, acid, and corrosion in your engine. Now that many car manufacturers recommend heavy-duty motor oil for top performance under all driving conditions, it's important to you to know that new RPM exceeds all of their requirements for a heavy-duty oil. Considering these facts, it's easy to see why new RPM motor oil is first choice with motorists. Be sure you get new RPM motor oil for long engine life. Look for the sign of your nearest independent Chevron gas station or standard station. There you'll find new RPM motor oil, which is one reason they say and mean we take better care of your car. 
to save the wealthy Mr. and Mrs. Laswell from an accident which was promised by a mysterious voice over the telephone. You obviously succeed in that because a harmless night watchman is the victim of the third and last in a series of three accidents foretold and delivered. So, at their home now, the Laswells are quite willing to consider the case closed. But if your name is George Valentine, you don't seem to be anywhere as willing... For one thing, nobody's come up with an answer to this. Why did William's accident take place two days after the warning, not on the third day? Mr. Valentine, please. Why keep pounding on this one point? It's 8 o'clock now. The third day won't begin till midnight. Have you any ideas, Mr. Dunn? Hmm? As Mr. Laswell's partner, you're a little more objective. Can you venture a guess? Well, I... I, I'm afraid not. I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Laswell's thinking. Uh, I told you before, Valentine. The man on the phone was merely taking advantage of some amazing coincidences. The death of the dog, Johnny's smash-up, uh, William's accident didn't fit this weird schedule, that's all. It'll be a million-to-one chance if it did. Uh-huh. I, I don't want to sound heartless. The poor watchman's death was horrible. So neat. But the nightmare is over. And I'm human enough to feel relieved. And the voice on the telephone? Some enemy of Mr. Laswell's. Some vicious man's idea of how to torture Mrs. Laswell. Uh, uh, Mr. Valentine, I'm grateful for your interest and sorry for the trouble my wife has caused you. Uh, here, please take this check. And thanks. Hmm. Nice check. Uh, uh, we were just going out. Uh, Dunn, Ruth and I. A quiet dinner somewhere, a few drinks. Why don't you call up Miss Brooks and join us? No, no thanks. I'm miserable company when something bothers me. And something bothers me. George, will you stop mumbling to yourself and eat something? It's 9.30. Yeah, Angel. 9.30 of the second day. Mark well the symbol three. The key to destiny. Darling, maybe you are just being stubborn about this whole thing. Oh, but something is wrong, Angel. The partner who calls her Ruth when he thinks they're alone, but is so careful to call her Mrs. Laswell when he sees us. And the original Mr. Big himself who blows hot and cold. So much combustible material, Brooksy, and none of the three principals are involved in any of the accidents. Ah, uh, come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> Just a hunch, Angel, but what a hunch. Uh, down this way, Mr. Valentine. They brought him in a couple of hours ago. I know, Kennedy. Be right with you. I'll, um, I'll sit here at Mr. Kennedy's desk. There's some very interesting old copies of life. I simply mustn't miss. Yeah, okay, Brooksy. Here he is, Valentine. Uh, Williams James. Cause of death. Accidental fall. Dates it. That's it. His nails, his hands. That's it. Hey, hey, Valentine. What is it? Have you gone crazy? No, Kennedy. A long shot just came romping home. But, George, what makes you so sure Williams was murdered? Just take my word for it right now. The important thing is to find out why the poor guy was killed. There's got to be an answer to that. Here? The big empty place where something is going to be built is about the last place to find anything. Couldn't be a question of money. No, not very well. He didn't particularly mean anything to Martin Laswell, so his death couldn't be expected to shock the big man or hurt him. George, this little shack where the watchman stays. Yeah, it's open. No, there's never anything much in one, see? A little stove, some lanterns to be filled... Just a cut and a few tools. Mm-hmm. Nothing seems to have been disturbed. He must have been hit on the head and then thrown down. No one in the world could tell the rocks didn't... What's the matter, George? In the corner. 
This space in the corner. Well? The dust. You can still see. There's no dust settled down. A square box stood there. And it was taken out of here probably right after Williams was killed. Square box? What about it? Another fairly standard part of equipment in the shack of a watchman on a construction job. A box of dynamite. Dynamite? Yes. That might be cause for murder. There was no signs of a struggle. Somebody was let in. Somebody whom Williams knew. The Laswells. Edwin Dunn. And now somebody has enough dynamite to really mark a symbol three. Ah, nobody answers to the Laswells. They're still out somewhere. But where? Uh, 11.25. Any time after midnight, the payoff to this whole weird buildup will really come. Brooksy, you get on the other phone. Call the police. Yes, George. Tell them to trace the license number of Laswell's car. Get the prowl cars and the motorcycle cops to see if they can pick them up. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, try and guess where a millionaire might go for a quiet dinner and a few drinks. Uh, a little rhubarb blue, a golden pheasant. I uh, guess the best thing I can do is get over to Laswell's and wait for him. What do you know? The house is all lit up. Uh-huh. The Laswell's car at the door. Mr. Dunn's car, too. Yeah. Must be topping off those few drinks with a few more. Regular celebration seems to... What? Oh! Oh! Mr. Valentine. Oh, what? Huh? That's the dark. Hey, who are you? Where are you? I am near you. Near enough. Hey, the house is still lit up. But you dragged me away from it. Hey, where are we? In back of the house. You never noticed there's just a sheer drop to the bottom of the ravine. I gotta get into that house. Stay still. I've got a gun. You can't see me, of course. But I've got it pointed right at you. Yeah. You're not going to let me do anything, are you? Not until it's all over. Mark well the symbol three. It's the key to destiny. Five minutes to twelve. I'm afraid I didn't knock you out hard enough. Well, after all, you're a pretty slight little man, Johnny. <laughs> John Wesley Gibbons, not Johnny. I'm a man, not a little child, and I'm not just a flunky who can be called whatever you wish. I guess it had to be you. Maybe I should have known sooner. You had to be the one who smacked up your own car. You move one inch and I'll kill you. You know I will. Yeah, I know, but don't worry. I never argue with a gun. The music is pretty, isn't it? And they don't suspect a thing. It'll take only a few minutes more. Come on, now, where is the dynamite? In Mr. Laswell's car, the big, shiny car. It's right next to the house, and soon it will blow up the house. But we're far enough away, we'll be safe. Well, look, you're, you're crazy as a loon, Buster. No, no, I'm smart. I know all sorts of things. I picked the car for a good reason, Valentine. That's where Mr. Laswell was always so big, and I was so small. Johnny the fool, Johnny the nobody. But Mrs. Laswell, Mr. Don, they're innocent. Stand back. Don't you move. I killed the dog, but I didn't mean to kill Williams. I just had to have the dynamite. You still have a chance to stop all this. You're a sick man. They'll treat you. They won't punish you. I told you I'm not crazy. I am stronger than fate. Oh, it was wonderful to see them squirm. The symbol three. Three small things. A dog, a chauffeur, a watchman. And the king will come tumbling down. You're not big, Johnny. You're small. You were always meant to be small. Don't call me Johnny. You can only carry out orders, Johnny. You've never finished a thing in your life. Shut up. I'm going to come at you, Johnny, and take your gun away. And if you shoot me, you'll miss it. Shut up. And I'll drive the car right up here and let it go over the ravine. You hear me, Johnny? Little Johnny. Johnny. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. 
Not in the state you're in, Buster. One chance is all you get, Johnny. I'm not a failure. Now take that gun now. No time to watch you. I only hope you gave me enough of the third day so I'll have time. Release the brake. Oh, tick a few seconds more, baby. Go on, ticking. Go on, go on. And one good shove over the side. Three minutes after 12. Thanks for being true to the symbol of three, Johnny. Now to tie up some real loose threads. It takes more than one feature in a gasoline to give you all-around dependable performance. That's why Chevron Supreme gasoline is designed to give you not one, not two, but all eight high-performance qualities. Count them. Area blending, mileage, power, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, starting, warm-up, and acceleration. For top all-around performance in your car, shift to the gas with all eight. Fill up with Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. A Messiah complex along with a persecution complex. Well, it'll take the doctor some doing to try and straighten Johnny out. Yeah. Yeah, he really sold himself a bill of goods, all right. George, you still didn't tell me how you knew that William's death wasn't an accident, that it had to be murder. Well, under his nails, there was none of that gray dirt we found on his jacket. Why wasn't there? If he just fell, he'd grab at anything, scratch at anything on his way down. Law of preservation. That's right. No, Brooksy, he had to be killed and then thrown down. Oh, darling, you're smart. Very smart. Gee, thanks. You're so smart, I'm proud to consider myself more than your assistant. Huh? You do think of me more as a partner, don't you? A sort of, uh, well, you know, a running mate? Sure, Angel. I was just thinking. It wouldn't be so hard for a girl to be a mate if some men wouldn't do so much running. Hmm. Oh, I knew you'd get it. You see, I told you you were smart. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you transcribed by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Kenneth Webb. Gene Bates was heard as Ruth, Theodore Von Elts as Laswell, Byron Kane as Johnny, and Don Randolph as Dunn. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Thank you.